Hey there everybody, Eric from Outer Limitless coming at you today with another video. Now today's video is very cool because we get to take a look at a product that at this point not too many people have. This might be one of the very first videos about this brand coming out and I'm excited to bring this to you. So what we're going to talk about is the company Shielden Knives which reached out to me and before we get too far, I would like to say thank you very much to the people at Shield In for a couple of things. First and foremost, providing some products for review, but second, reaching out to me as a technical resource to provide them with critical feedback. So today's video is wide open, first look, first impression, and critical feedback. So I'm bringing all of you into the process with their permission to get some feedback. So for all of you watching, if you have thoughts about these products, things you'd like to see, feedback you'd like to provide, well, Shielden is giving us the opportunity and I'm giving you the platform to do so. So we're gonna go through these four models in detail, looking at these Shielden knives getting some first impressions, and providing the company with some feedback together. So they want to grow, they want to improve, and they're reaching out not just to me, but to all of you. But with that said, we have a whole bunch to do and a whole bunch to share together. And if you're interested in seeing a little bit more about what we are about to get into, do me a favor, stay tuned. And again, before we get too far, I would like to say thank you very much again to Shield and Knives for providing these products for review. All right, so here we have two models. I have yet to even break these out of the bubble wrap, so we are doing this together. And here, two more models. And the nice thing is, well, they have the names on the outside of the box. And on these ones, yep, same thing. So that's good. Um, I have no idea what they sent me now. In full disclosure, I did discuss with uh, Shielden representatives their knife lineup in general. Had a preliminary talk with them um, via a web conference call. And talked to them a little bit about their objectives. And again, they are looking for critical feedback. So we're going to go through this in detail, including the packaging. I say it on my channel a lot, packaging doesn't necessarily matter to me. However, when a company's paying attention to the details and the packaging, well, I'm hoping they're gonna be paying attention to the details for the actual product inside. So first impressions, overall, nicely done, very straightforward, a good clean logo. I do like the colors here. Um, this appears to be either a straight black or a really dark blue box with a nice light blue logo. Has a good look, has a nice pop, and it's a bit different from other companies, which is great. Obviously, you don't want uh, companies to be copying each other. And the name Shielden, I've definitely never heard before. Now, the boxes are taped on both ends, and you end up with the name on the outside. So you can see everything. And at this point, we're just going to pick the first model. So this one here, the item name, this is the Empoleon. So Empoleon. Um, this is the uh, model 9049G1-B. Now I have seen a lot of naming conventions in the past and typically the B would be sort of uh, an iteration. So you would have an A, a B, a C, a D, which would probably be the material choice or the color of the blades. Uh, here, this is uh, designed by apparently Django. So uh, the designer's name is Django. Um, D2 uh, for the blade steel, G10 for the handle material. This is a 3.54 inch blade length, total length of 8.03. Says it weighs in at 3.35 ounces and it has a blade finish of a black titanium coating. So that could be the B. So with that, let's pop this open and we'll get a good look at this in detail. All right, so again, this is the Empoleon. So E-M-P-O-L-E-O-N, so Empoleon. Opening up here, and, oh, very cool. Okay, so nice. First thing you'll see, all right, we have a little user's manual, a couple of uh, images there. 
Very nice, very straightforward. Looks like a number of languages. Flipping this over. Okay, and I know you all want to see the knives. We will get into that, but let's just see what they say. Thank you for choosing Shielden for ensuring the maximum attention to every detail. Product related assembly, finishing, and blade sharpening are completed manually. Okay, so manual blade sharpening. Very cool. Each process from design to production is required to the greatest accuracy. Shielden provides a limited lifetime warranty for products from authorized merchants against defects in materials and workmanship. So authorized merchants, that's going to be a big deal. You will see Shielden products coming out with, um, and I would say in very familiar places. Um, I will not divulge. I do know some in what they're trying to do, um, but that's for them to figure out. So if you are interested in these Take a look at some of those usual places where you'd pick up blades and they will also, um, you know, warranty these, I guess, for a limited lifetime warranty. However, if a product is damaged due to loss, abuse, negligence, improper use, accident, improper sharpening or repair by unauthorized party, Shielden will not provide a warranty for after sale or warranty work. Contact service at Shielden.net. Shielden items belong to precise machinery in order to perform at optimum appropriate care and maintenance is necessary keep lubricated and clean check regularly and remove debris or lint sharpen with correct techniques i would also say long term keep an eye on uh, your screws making sure that they stay tight we don't know how they assemble these but we are going to find out so very nice this little pouch really cool um, nicely done with the logo on the front feels very good Nice blue stitching, a black pouch, has the uh, belt loop here, sturdy button, so that snap, nice and sturdy, feeling good, little Velcro enclosure, and opening up on the inside here, well, here you have the knife. Now, I'm going to bring up one very subtle detail for the people at Shielden, um, just from my experience, keeping in mind this knife is in D2. Um, which D2 is relatively corrosion resistant, um, but it is potentially prone to corrosion in the wrong circumstances. These boxes are going to sit in a warehouse on a shelf somewhere, and you do not know what the temperature is going to be. It could have temperature swings, and when you have hot and cold and hot and cold and potential temperature swings, well, that could lead to condensation and moisture. I would definitely put a little packet of silica gel inside here just to keep it safe because you don't know what's going to happen to this so a little packet of silica gel is going to protect the knife other companies do it there is a reason for that and i can say i have seen rusty knives coming out of boxes in d2 so if this is not fully protected it could be prone to corrosion. That's just a little bit of feedback from, call it the customer service side of things, which I would say I do have some experience. But here in the package, let's see. So again, this here is called the Empoleon. Um, very neat slimline design, um, maybe bordering on gentleman's knife. Has a little bit of a gray, um, and I don't know, I'm not going to say titanium, but a pivot collar there, looking very good. Immediately, these look to be T6 screws and T8s. Flipper tab um, on the back here, you end up with, I believe those are going to be T8s on your clip, which is cool. Uh, thin clip, black coating, uh, definitely not deep ride, but not a big deal. I'm glad there are two bolts there. Um, but looking at the blade, let's check this action. Nice and smooth. That feels good. So again, D2 blade with a black coating, um, fairly thin, not overly thick. We'll take a look at that in a second. Nice lightweight. This is a lightweight design. As I look real quick, there is some skeletonizing on the inside. This does appear to be steel liners. Has a nice back spacer with a little bit of jimping just for a cool look. And I like that this is fairly open, easy for cleaning. Now, looking at the lockup, you'll see this is a steel uh, liner lock in there. You have roughly 25% lockup, which is nice. No blade rock at all. That's solid. And that feels pretty good. So overall, nice. Now, drop shut. Mm, not so much. Not so much. But keep in mind one thing brand new knife first off 
And second off, a very, I would say, shallow blade profile. There is not a lot of mass to this. It is fairly sleek, not overall you know, too deep. So there's not a lot in the way of blade mass. It is also fully flat ground, which takes away some of the mass. This is going to be nice and slicey, nice and low profile. Looks pretty good. And this here is the Empoleon. So, so far, yeah, pretty cool. They did report on the box that this Empoleon is 3.35 ounces. Now my scale could be completely jacked up, but let's put this on there and see what we get. 3.2, well, that's pretty close to 3.35. And with the scale that I have being literally used and abused, I mean, is that close enough? I would say definitely so. Putting that back on there, yeah, 3.2. So 3.35, 3.2, uh, close enough for my books. I would say they're reporting fairly close. Now the next one here, this is called the Barrascuda. So not Barracuda, but this is the Barrascuda. Again, designed by Django, D2. Um, the handle material, it says 3CR14 and carbon fiber. So we'll see what they mean there. Uh, blade finish gray, titanium coating, ringing in at 4.6 ounces. Now this has a 3.74 inch blade length and a total length of 8.62 ounces. Same box, uh, again, sealed on this side. This side, you'll notice it is not sealed. So I uh, just missed that little, uh, you know, sealing sticker there for some reason. Not a big deal. Uh, but getting into this here, popping it out, and again, very similar where you end up with your user's manual the pouch opening it up here is the barrascuda oh okay so you end up with an inlay so that's the first thing you'll see okay so that is again your um you know your alloy uh for the actual uh, outside of the scales with a carbon fiber inlay you'll see there's just some oil on there that's not a bad thing oil is never going to be a bad thing and the inlay as I feel, it feels pretty good. Um, a little bit of a lip on there, uh, not a big deal. It does look like it's fairly well cut. And then in terms of the tolerance, as we look at it around the perimeter, pretty good. So I would say this looks pretty, pretty nice overall. Now it looks like they went a little bit bigger with the hardware. This might be all T8s. In fact, as we check this here, this is my T8. That's actually a little bit loose there. Here, that's spot on. So I don't think the pivot collar is a T8. Look at that. This definitely is. So if you look here, the frame screws, those are definitely T8s. Now, what about on the clip? Those are those are T6s. Or maybe not even, because that's pretty loose. If you look here, these might not even technically be T6s. So I'm going to have to ask them about that. You'll see there's an over-travel stop here. That's tight. So this is a T6. This is a T8. These are somewhere in between and that is even larger. So there's something going on with the size of the hardware um, that makes, I believe, at least at minimum four different uh, screw sizes, which I'm not going to be a big fan. And especially for me personally, coming from the maintenance side of things um, and doing service work, that's going to be a little bit of a pain in the neck. So uh, that's some feedback early on. Just paying attention specifically to the size of the actual Torx heads. Because to me, that's going to make a difference. But again here, the Barrascuda flipper tab. Let's check the action. Very nice. So that is sweet. Now here you'll see this is a frame lock. So nice design. Checking the lock up there. Uh, pretty good, actually, at maybe 25%, a little bit less, I would say. Uh, maybe, yeah, about 25% in terms of getting the knife shut. Very simple, so that feels good. Not different than really any other 
uh, frame locks I'm used to. Very quick and easy. Good blade mass and the ability to flip that open. Yep, you can get on that cutout there. So very cool. So either with the flipper tab or flicking that open. So that's nice. I do very much like this blade shape. Very utility driven, which is nice. The ability to get flat down on the surface, you can see, has a little bit, just a subtle cant to the handle. Has a nice feel and general balance. Look at that beautifully balanced right where you want it so very nicely done in that regard you'll see nice back spacer a little bit of jimping doubles as a lanyard hole so very cool looking at the inside here um yeah there is some skeletonizing and in fact it's fully skeletonized to the point where all that's left on the inside is the back side of the carbon fiber so that has been completely milled out and if you were to remove this carbon fiber panel, which we'll have to see if we can do that at some point, uh, probably in a full review of one of these, I might, I might do that in a separate video because this is going to be pretty long as it is, but that will be interesting to see how that goes. Now, one thing I did not do with the prior knife, let's look at the centering. Very nicely done, almost perfect on the centering. So that's great. And flicking that open, no problem. And let's check it. Yeah, this one's a little more drop shot, which is nice. I know people like that. I personally don't care, not even a little bit. In fact, I would prefer this. I believe these are on bearings. We will check one of these to see if it's on bearings, and I believe it is. Honestly, personally, I would pre pre just prefer uh, nice um, phosphor bronze washers for overall durability and a harder use. I don't really care for ball bearings myself, but for those that do... Nice and drop shut. So nicely done with the Barascuta. And again, just trying to keep them honest. Here they say 4.6 ounces, getting that on the scale. Well, you can see I'm either under registering or they're being uh, very modest with their weights. So here, 4.5 ounces. So weighing in in my uh, measurements, less than the reported amount. So that's pretty cool. All right. So this one now, this is the BOA. So the item number 9043G, uh, again, designed by Django, D2 blade material, G10 handle material, 3.82 blade length, 8.74 total length. Uh, this weighing in at 4.48 ounces with a gray titanium coating. Again, this is the BOA, same box, same presentation, same everything. So we will get straight to the knife really cool already i like the material so a really nice uh, g10 material multi-layered multi-color pretty cool and while calling this the boa that already has a little bit of a snake look we'll get right into the centering first thing looking very good nice uh, spacers on the back. I like this. It's more of a standoff design. So fully open construction there. You can see right through. I can already see inside there is skeletonizing a nice gray coating on the actual uh, frame there. So very cool matching in with the blade and also the clip. So let's just check real quick these screws. This one here. Let's see. That's a T6 for sure. This one here. That is a T6 for sure. These ones here on the clip, that is not a T8. Did I already say that's a T6? Mm, that's like a T7. Is there such a thing? There must be. That is literally right in between because that is not a T8. I don't like that. And the pivot, that is definitely a t8 that fits nice and tight you'll see here also has a nice pivot collar and a good look a little bit of jimping should be able to flick this open but you also here you have that flipper tab boom there you go all right so a little bit of a modified tonto shape pretty cool i do like that uh, this reminds me actually of a bench made that i have called the contigo uh, where you do end up with a little bit of that sort of reverse tonto has a saber grind that feels fully flat ground on the primary bevel and let's look at this point at their secondary grind in detail so they say they hand grind their knives which here this is going to be a little bit challenging and i would say extremely sharp 
very, very sharp. So that's nice. And it looks to be also extremely even all the way from that nice little sharpening choil all the way to the transition. And it also looks very even from the transition to the tip. Maybe not completely perfect, but really good. So, so far, Shielden, I'd say doing a pretty good job overall. Lock up here between 25 and 30 percent. Overall, very nice. Feels good. And definitely nice deployment. And then in terms of drop shut, pretty good. So again, a little more mass here, a little more weight on the blade. And that goes down mighty nice. Uh, definitely not a deep ride pocket clip again. So for those of you who require a deep ride pocket clip, that for me is not going to be a big deal. In fact, a knife like this with utility purpose, I want to get out of my pocket with ease. Now taking a look, I can say already I am going to greatly enjoy this pocket clip. I have had clips with this exact design, which I do enjoy. This gets down into your pocket with ease, no problem, and feels pretty good. So we're going to check that at a later time, but I would say so far looking real nice on the pocket clip. But yeah, so here the boa, that is pretty nice. And let's get it on the scale, keep them honest here. Well, there, here we go. That says it is 4.5 ounces and they are reporting 4.48. So yes, they say 4.5, uh, 4.48 as the reported on the box. So I'd say that is absolutely within tolerance and very nicely done. So here. This is the Shield and Knives Boa. Pretty cool. All right, and last but not least, this is the 7091D Tortank. Again, designed by Django. This says it is in 9CR18 MOV Damascus with a G10 handle, 3.62 inch blade length, 8.46 inch total length, a weight of 4.62 ounces, and it says the blade finish is acid etched. So this one should be pretty neat. I am excited to see what they say about this quote unquote Damascus. You never really know. So, huh. Ooh, all right. Beautiful G10. I mean, right off the get-go, I love that look. Uh, I'm a big fan of this G10. Green and black, beautiful, nice lanyard hole. Uh, actually, I'm already seeing a nice Damascus popping off, not only on the blade, but on that flipper tab. That right there, that detail is fantastic. I love that you have that machine G10 collar with the actual, um, you know, machined collar on the inside. So your actual pivot collar recessed in there nicely. Uh, this has not only a flipper tab, but, you know, thumb studs there. Flipping this over fairly thin on the clip a little bit surprising for such a beefy knife um, but the other thing that i haven't talked about yet all of these are a tip up carry which for me is fantastic and they are all right hand so something worth noting and i'm just picking up on that now all tip up carry and all right hand carry so for you lefties or your tip down fans unfortunately this may not be for you but for me it works now the elephant in the room well pivot collar there you go that's your t8 um, on your frame screws that's a t6 and on your clip that is something in between so they are consistently confusing me um, and i would say these are probably like t7s so a little bit beefier than t6s how do you guys feel about that i mean come on leave some comments i'm curious how you feel, do you care that the hardware is a little bit different than the quote unquote standard? Or let me ask this a different way. Is this the new standard where it's not quite as dainty as a T6, but it's not as beefy as a T8? Maybe, maybe, just maybe. They have found the sweet spot because working service, I can tell you, I have definitely struggled with knives in T6 hardware on the clip. That's a problem. And sometimes even on the frame. So T6s don't always work. And I would go as far as to say to Shielden, 
if you're going to go with, if these are T7s, which I don't even know, I'm just making it up, but they're bigger than T6s and they're smaller than T8s. But if these are, do that also with the frame screws. Why not standardize and just beef up the hardware a little bit? That might be nice. Or just go T8s all the way across. But looking here, cool little machining. Uh, this one's not quite perfect on the centering. Let's see if we can just adjust it just real quick. making a little bit of an adjustment there that kind of did fix it. So just tweaking on the centering there a tiny bit. Did I impact the action? Hard to say, boom, nope. And oh, cool blade shape. All right, again, very utility driven. Awesome in a way it has sort of that reverse Tonto with a big old belly. This thing has a gorgeous shape. I definitely like it. Nice overall presentation. Beautiful on that Damascus. It does, at an initial glimpse, look to be true Damascus. I am certainly not an expert, but that looks very nice. Beautiful pattern. Wonderfully done. Awesome etching. And just looks really cool. Now, of course, here you do also have the thumb studs so working very well nice fit and ergos in the hand this is not a full finger choil but you could if you're comfortable get up there for a little more controlled work which i like this knife is sweet i definitely like this i am a big fan i like the overall look and presentation i like that it's subdued i would carry this every day no problem drop shut Eh, close. Not a big deal. You could certainly play with this. Now, I think you're going to need two T8s to kind of tweak on this a little bit and get it positioned the way you need. Not a big deal. Um, but overall, yeah, there you go. This knife, and that actually fixed the centering to literally perfect. The action now, even better. So just a little adjustment there and drop shut with ease. So yeah, this knife here, this knife, this is a gem. This is a gem. I like this a lot. This is a beautiful knife, beautiful shape. I like a larger knife. This is fantastic. So to Shielden, um, I'm a big fan. I like this a lot. Now again, the reported weight here as we get it on the scale, 4.62 ounces. And this scale ringing in at what looks to be... 4.5 so again they are i would say fairly conservative um, in their reported weights which is a good thing and this here um this knife here again is the tour tank this is a gem so guys leave some comments i'm curious to hear what you think about these shield and knives and your first impressions that was a first look at these again um i may get into further detail moving forward but my initial impression, they look to be doing a nice job. So, Shielden, uh, for your, uh, you know, rookie venture and first time getting a look at these, I have to say I'm, I'm pretty happy. These look great. And so again, obviously, we have been looking at Shielden knives for different models. Very cool. What do you guys think? How do you feel about these? Um, where do these fall in your mind in terms of price, in terms of the overall fit and finish? I mean, I know we went through these, I would say, fairly quick. I do intend on getting into some more detailed videos, potentially on each of these. I haven't figured out exactly what I want to do yet. I have to disassemble these. I do want to play with them. I want to take a look at the bearings. I want to take a look at the detent. Um, you know, I am interested in checking these out in, I would say, a little more granular detail. But for a start today, and again, coming from not just the gear review perspective, but as somebody who is in the business performing service on knives, um, I am mostly happy. The different size hardware, I don't know yet. I haven't made it up in my mind. They're either missing the bar or they're setting the bar. And I haven't figured that out just yet. Um, overall, the quality looks to be there. The fit and finish seems to be fantastic. I like their general design work. So Django, good job. 
good utility driven purpose, a little bit of gentleman's on one of those. Um, the material choices, I would say are very well done. The uh, fit to the actual scales on the frame, nicely done. Uh, very well centered. The sharpening looks to be pretty much spot on. I mean, I can tell you these are definitely, definitely sharp. I don't need to cut anything to tell you that. So shielding, so far, I am happy. So nice job. And um, I'm interested in seeing some more. So all right, guys, thanks for stopping by. I hope you like what you saw. Hope you found it a little bit informative. If you like what you saw, please like, share, and subscribe. And as always, thanks for stopping by. Take care now. I'll see you soon.